Hi, welcome to Scaling Out eCloud.Global. We are E, a fully removable mobile ecosystem. We have taken Android open source project and we have removed all calls and dependencies to Google services. Then we have added MicroG, which fixed uh, and replaces the presence of Play services. Then we have added an application store so that people can install the applications they need from Android. And we have also included a default set of applications, which is customized and integrated. Then we have eCloud, which is our, our cloud services, next cloud for storage and data, and we have a mail server and a search engine. We also provide an open source and self-host option so that people can install all these in their servers and retain full control of their data. This talk is about eCloud.global version 1, which is the first server that we set up after our crowdfunding campaigns, and it was uh, a success going from the MVP to uh, 10,000 accounts and over 7 terabytes of data. But uh, it was all set up in the same server, Nextcloud and Mail, and it was proving to be uh, quite a maintenance nightmare. Uh, we also had some scale issues in terms of storage uh, because we could only use up to 4 terabytes of block devices provided by uh, our data center and we had to put them together with RAID, which every time we run out of space would mean, you know, uh, taking it on the server and, and preparing that all again. We also had to do some fine tuning to Linux and PHP, MySQL configurations, because we were uh, facing slowdowns. So we started a project called V2, in which we envision what would be the ideal architecture to serve all our global uh, user base. We thought of a geo-distributed and redundant um, uh, architecture for all services, uh, which would be, would be backed by a Minio object storage, and it would use LDAP for single sign-on, a Galera cluster for the database, and it would be uh, using Nextcloud and Grain encryption, um, and deployed using Docker Swarm or not. But uh, on the way, we, we set up a more realistic target, which we called version 1.5. And this would use a proxy to load balance to diff, uh, three different Nextcloud instances, uh, only for a node, a Minio cluster, and master slave replication instead of a direct cluster. All the communication between the nodes would be protected by a wired VPN. Uh, then, then came some new requirements, because with, uh, we asked for server-side encryption and Nextcloud 16 to Nextcloud 18 upgrade. And we also discovered that uh, it wasn't possible to use the object storage as a main backend when server-side encryption wasn't able. So uh, instead, we decided to use Ceph, Ceph as a uh, you know, shared storage and, and distributed storage, uh, which was uh, not easy to set up and fine-tune, but it's true that once it's up, then it's, it's very powerful and it allows a lot of flexibility. Then the problem was that uh, when we were uh, ready to go live, we detected that we had uh, like a major performance issue with our you know, network storage. And it was apparently solved by using only a block device, which unfortunately could not be mounted in multiple uh, next cloud instances at the same time. So uh, we had to drop that and drop the load balancing and use instead on the uh, you know, primary and uh, failover instance that we could manually switch to if, if we had some problem or some schedule maintenance. Um, and we thought this could work, you know, because the new servers, each of them is more powerful than the old one, and we are moving mail out to a different machine, and you know, there are high chances it, it will work. We have like double the run and everything. Um, so yeah, let's go live with this and at least you know we make some progress. And we did go live with that on, on July and this year, and it was a very long migration, uh, quite quite hard. But eventually, you know, everything was up, everything was set up and working, and and we waited. And when the when the traffic came, everything was done again. Uh, CPU was was reaching 100 percent every time full load. Uh, and there was nothing we could do. Uh, every time we tried to bring it up, it was it was falling. No? Uh, we we checked every setting, every every component. We disabled encryption. Uh, we tuned uh, PHP and Jinx uh, to no avail. And and we tried to bring the traffic progressively in 
uh, to see where we were the problem because you know we were seeing uh, huge logs in Jinx, uh, like a big traffic, so we were even blocking some offending IPs. We were kind of under attack, you know, uh, and, and in the end there was there was no way to, to bring it up even for our legitimate users. So we had to revert back to the previous machine, which also would not work. And what we did was simply resize it because that's the fun of cloud instances. And we had it like uh, four times more powerful, and eventually uh, the service was restored. Um, good thing uh, all this is that at least we, we managed to sneak in some of the improvements uh, of the of the last uh, months of development, and and also of the of the specific migration, all these fine tunings that we have been uh, discovering. So the R and D project continued uh, in order to to be able to to use this this set of infrastructure and new servers that we are preparing. Uh, we managed to to fix the CFS uh, performance by adding SSDs into the into the mix by journaling or specific pools for mail. Um, uh, we also did a lot of measuring using different web dev tools, comparing the old infrastructure and the new one. We also measured and uh, the drives the drive performance. Of the old OVH blocks and and the new and the new Ceph, uh, Ceph drives, and eventually we were very confident that the infrastructure was actually was actually better now um, than the old one. So so we set up on a on a second migration attempt, uh, which was this August, and this time it worked. And this is how it looks now. Our setup, uh, we have true load balancing. We have three different Nextcloud instances. One of them is uh, primary because it has uh, the right enabled database. The other two are, are replicas, so that the, we can take uh, snapshots of them, for instance. Uh, we have Redis, also in one of the secondaries. Um, we have separate mail host, which has the SSD pool, and, and we can map any arbitrary directory into a, into a faster storage, so that's very flexible. And what did we learn from here? Uh, we learned to be Data driven to test every component by itself, to also test it all together to see how it performs, and to make only one change at a time, because every change can potentially impact uh, all the measurements you've been doing so far. So that's it. Thank you very much, and enjoy the conference.